Blood. My shoes match my shirt, my shirt match my pants, my pants match my hat, my hat match my hat. The counterculture mission is, in essence, the love mission. So uh, I feel like anybody who's plugged into the love mission and a mission to serve people are really representing um, counterculture in a way. Counterculture first started with with uh, me and a group of friends um, just having a heart for juvenile inmates. Now I was exposed. I was exposed to that when I was uh, I was younger. I was I was actually a part of a ministry that uh, that went into prisons. And we would, we would go and speak. And once that ministry stopped going, um, you know, I continued to go cause, because, I, you know, I had a passion for it. And so uh, it first started, um, really, I, you know, we officially say that we started in 2011. But I actually started going to prisons probably um, on my own, probably in, in like 09. I say probably around 09, 2011. Me and the girl that I was dating at the time, we uh, we we had a, you know we developed an overwhelming passion for the homeless, and uh, we started to 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 just go out and, and get burgers and, and feed the homeless. Um, and then I remember when her and I we broke up. Um, it was a lot going on in my life at that time. I remember uh, being laid off from my job. I remember uh, breaking up with the girl that I was dating at the time. I remember my my reputation and all of that was in jeopardy. You know, in the minute in the middle of my depression. I felt, you know, I felt God pushing me to uh, to continue to feed the homeless, you know, do do what was, you know, on my heart from the beginning. And I remember my cousin at the time too was very instrumental in, um, you know, making sure that I was intentional about continuing to feed the homeless and all that other stuff. So he would hit me up, and and uh, he and I we would we would we would go. Um, but man, I just continued on. Then I remember, like, uh, um, we was we would post it on social media, like what we were doing. Like we would go, um, we would go and and we would feed the homeless and we would take pictures and talk about our experiences. And it was just like, yo, a bunch of people were just like, yo, we wanna we wanna come with you. I just seeing what y'all was doing, it was crazy. Just seeing coming from where I came from, where everybody, all of my friends were all game back. Everybody that I knew around my age was selling dope, gang banging. All the women were, you know, doing just basically on some hood stuff. And coming out here and then seeing y'all young people like serving, like where they do that at? Like you, sir, you guys are out here serving the community, like really not thinking nothing. I'm coming. I came from selfishness, and so I would say one of the biggest lessons I learned from the jump was just about selfishness, about not being selfish, not caring about yourself, but doing stuff for other people. We prepared the meals, we prepared 100 meals. Come on, give yourself a hand. Y'all prepared 100 meals, what's up? And uh, we sorted some clothes, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna uh, get in our cars and we're gonna head over to the Austin Street Shelter. Um, at the Austin Street Shelter, there are a ton of homeless um, people. Naturally, with uh, with with growth comes a need for additional structure and so we, we really just begin to, to work on building that structure to withstand um, the weight of the amount of people that were that were wanting to be a part of what we were doing. The passion for the prisons uh, the homeless, the nursing homes, uh, it came, that passion came from uh, reading the Bible and, and, and Jesus talking to his disciples, he was like, Yo, I was hungry and you fed me, um, I was naked and you clothed me, I was in prison and you visited me. You know, one of my closest friends, he was 15 years old, he got shot in the back of the head. It, it crushed me crush me. So when I go into these prisons and speak to these kids, I see him in them. And it really like, it's like, that's what drives me because I, I was a main influence in his life. We, uh, 
uh, now we tour, we tour prisons, we, we, uh, we feed the homeless on a regular basis and, and clothe them and create unique opportunities for, for them to get involved. Um, um, you know, we cre create unique social opportunities for, for the homeless, like we'll go in and uh, we'll do a movie night, um, or karaoke, or um, we'll bring a you know a comedian in, or, or um, we'll, we'll dance and we'll just have fun, and then we'll share encouraging words. We we um, we go into nursing homes and we do much of the same. We'll, we'll go in with, with a group of young people, and uh, we'll just love on people, love on them uh, from the bottom of our hearts, and let them know that they still have purpose and they're still loved. Our responsibility is to love people. And so um, I want to inspire people to love others um, and, and to give back and to do it from a pure place. You know, we can't control what other people do, but we can control our action. And I believe every action has a reaction. And so if that, if that sandwich or that hot dog um, or those two dollars or, um, or those flowers for the elderly or a visit to somebody who's in prison, um, if that's a tangible expression of love for them, um, and imagine the ripple effect that that has in their life. And I want to inspire people to, That's awesome. I want to inspire people to do that. It's a beautiful thing to really be out here and just loving on people and impacting the world. I would love to see a generation of people um, that just live backwards and repping in their schools, they're, they're on, on their jobs, around their fr friends, around their family. Let's just live backwards together. Let's live backwards. That's what I want to see. Let's live backwards. Yeah, counterculture, I can't. Good guy. <laughs>